Namaskar. We have seen so far in the GFR, especially the procurement part, apart from gem purchase, advertised tender inquiry, that is open tender, limited uh, tender inquiry, single tender, etc. And also electronic reverse auctioning. And we have also discussed about the two bit, two, two stages of bid evaluation. Now we have come to the preparation of bidding document. What should be the contents? So major head, some seven chapters the government has prescribed. You can add more also, but broadly these should be available. That is important. All the terms, conditions, stipulations and information to be incorporated in the bidding document are to be shown in the appropriated chapters. So they have given as a model thing, they have given seven chapters. You can add more also if it is specific to your department. But these things must be available in the tender document. First is instructions to bidders. What are all required? Primary instructions. What is expected of the bidders? All those things will come. And conditions of the contract. Not only conditions, period, everything will come in that. It is, if it is for one year if it, or if the proposal is for three years, whatever period or if it is one time purchase, everything will be given in the conditions of contract along with the mode of contract also. And schedule of requirements. Suppose you buy more than, it is not one time purchase. It is periodical purchase or for a particular period you buy at various points. So there is a table which will give you the requirement. At this point of time we will by this all those things something like that so schedule of requirements will be given in a separate chapter and specification to allied technical details which are very important for buying most of the items specification technical details are of paramount important here you have to give in a clear term there should be no scope for any confusion if you have con the more you have confusion the more you get clarifications and seeking clarification other things so you need to clarify all those things and postpone the tender submission date. Of course, you have the concept of pre-bid meeting and all. There also they will raise points. But as long as you have very clear cut uh, uh, specifications, etc. The corrections, coverage and terms will be reduced. Of course, you might expect something and you will specify all those things. From the manufacturer's side, they will give their views also. No, this cannot be done. They, it, it requires to be done like this, something like that. So, those things, the committee will examine and uh, issue amendment once they agree to the new proposal, not proposal, new conditions of specification or whatever it is, any changes, any deviations. But they can't change entirely what is available. It is only modifications rather. So, the specification allied technical details are provided in chapter 4. And chapter 5 is price schedule which will be entered by the, you will only give a tabular column where the <coughs> bidders will quote the rates item wise or whatever way you want and total also. Total will be taken into account for a specified quantity and other things. Okay. Now uh, contract form. So you have to make uh, some uh, format of what, what will be the contract for purchase or everything. And uh, all things, empanelment, anything you, you give the format in the tender document itself. There cannot be major deviation from the format you have given, but normally indicative for format has to be given. And also other standard formats if it is required by the purchaser or the bidders. So these things, see how you finalize. Normally if you have clear cut information, you go straight away with the request for proposal, RFP, which is calling for tenders. Otherwise, request for expression of interest because you don't have idea. You want to do something, but you don't have idea how to go about it. So, then you go for expression of interest. There you will give broad requirement. Then all technical details they will provide. With that, uh, you will that is one level before request for proposal. So, all these things, based on the need, you will prepare the document. And uh, that will be the broad parameters of building documents to be prepared by the procuring entity. Now rule number 169 is maintenance contract. See once you buy, normally there is one thing called warranty period. So the rates you will give in the condition itself. We need minimum uh, one, one year warranty or three year warranty or even five year warranty also nowadays they insist. 
so rate will be accordingly the warranty period support they will uh, factor in uh, in their proposal and uh, the pro uh, the quotations will be submitted by the vendors now if you make for 5 years 5 years entire 5 uh, year period post supply and installation the maintenance will be taken care by the supplier because it is already paid okay in such cases you can't make advance payment uh, suppose if you make advance payment then you have to make sure sufficient safeguard to ensure the party carries out warranty period service properly so you have to get performance guarantee in that so depending on the cost and nature of the goods to be purchased it is necessary to enter into maintenance contract of suitable period either with the supplier of the goods or with any other competent firm not necessarily the supplier of the subject goods see if it is if the oem is only one you can't have anybody else they will take up the maintenance also if there are number of players in the market then you can go for separately amc rate after the completion of amc period so you will start your tender process at least 6 3 to 6 months before the completion of the warranty period so that the maintenance is taken care properly such maintenance contracts are especially needed for sophisticated and costly equipments and machinery okay it may however be kept in mind that the equipments or machinery is maintained free of charge by the supplier during the warranty period or such other extended periods as the contract terms may provide and the paid maintenance should commence only thereafter so warranty period everything will be properly defined in the tender period itself so once uh, finalized of course you will be following that with uh, maintenance contract maintenance contract can be comprehensive which includes change of tools and accessories also or it is only service other parts they will charge separately part by part the the committee has to decide technical committee has to decide which is advantages to the department and of course market also will say certain things they will accept for comprehensive in comprehensive maintenance <coughs> the the amc holder the person who has signed contract will be responsible for replacement of the component also if it is only service contract any component which is certified or declared to be unusable department has to buy and uh, provide and our other uh, mechanism we have to have to have those uh, accessories separately and that will be used by the service provider for only service these are all maintenance contract uh, related things uh, now i think uh, payment related certain parts are there with that we will be completing our videos thank you